Think about this for one second. When you were a child and your parent wasn't giving you that voice or giving you that leeway or giving you that, you know, here, here, take a little bit of rope and learn, right? When you were that child and you kept saying, oh, I wish, I wish when I have children, I'm not going to do it like this. I'm not going to do it this way, the way my parents did it. I'm going to change it up. And you're not changing it up. Well, you need to revert back to when you were a child for a sec. Take some time when you were a child and say, remember, I remember when I said when I have children, I was I was going to let them or I would let them do this or and I'm not saying put your child in danger, but just remember that you were once a child and you also wanted a voice. Now, give your child that voice because you can change the way patterns are because we have this pattern. We as people, it's not we're talking as black men. So in our culture, you know, I'm from Central America. My family's from Central America. My wife's family's from the West Indies. Fenton has the same concept. He's, you know, has some West Indies in them and American. And our cultures tell us, well, if they don't listen, you beat them. If they don't listen, you yell at them. And if they don't listen, you no, because you were a child and you said you wouldn't do that when you had children. So change up your patterns. All right. Yo, good morning, Ken. What's up, man? Good morning, Fenton. How you doing, sir? I'm great. Doing this again. <laughs> it's another week. Yay. How's that sleep coming along? It's not It's not <laughs> happening. It's pretty horrible. If you don't have kids, uh, I mean, you know, whatever, have kids. It's great. But know that you're not going to sleep at all. It's pretty terrible. So that's where we're at with it. I remember we were talking probably, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And you were like, oh, we got all the sleep in the world. I don't know what you're talking about. Our newborn's not your newborn. I'm up refreshed, Ken. And I said, hey, Fen, give it a couple of weeks. <laughs> Let it I do not settle in. That. You I do. Video back on that I remember that. I don't know whether or not we had it on our talk or is it before we started recording, but you were refreshed. It was like four or five days in. You know, you brought her home from the hospital. You were four or five days in. You looked refreshed. You're like, yeah, I can. I got six hours of sleep. We're good. You know, our baby doesn't wake up. And I'm like, all right, no doubt. I don't know <laughs> like, that. This kid has been a, a train wreck the whole time. We haven't gotten sleep since she was born in the hospital. Here's what I will say. I do remember um, a good buddy of mine kept asking me, how are you feeling about having another child? And I'm like, amazing. It's like, it's going to be great. I can't wait. I'm excited. It's like, I got everything under control. And he's like, you're in denial. I'm like, no. Nah. I'm like, no, no, no. I know it's going to suck. I know it's going to suck. I'm not going to sleep. It's going to be terrible. And it has been terrible. It's like, as, as amazing as having a baby is, and you love the little thing to life, it's like, they're little terrorists. <laughs> they are. They see you start to fade. <laughs> I want to play now for two hours, and it's three a.m. <laughs> so you you said that you get plenty of sleep. Uh Even yeah. You have um, you don't have a newborn. No, he one turned newborn. one. He turned one yesterday, actually. Right. So um, that first year has gone by, but yeah, my wife is not a. Exactly, getting the most sleep <laughs> possible. Um, I mean, I get my five or six hours. I'm good to go. Mm. Um, you know, then I have to leave the house, get on the road, get to work. But uh, I get I get my sleep in. I'm not going to front. You know, she she's definitely taking care of that baby, making sure that he's good to go. And right. I get my sleep. It is what it is. You know. All right. So <laughs> but when I'm home, like what? Good. When you're home, good. Oh, like days like today, like, you know, he woke up. I heard him. I'm like, let me go back downstairs because I have to get the kids ready for school. So I went back upstairs, grabbed him. I'm like, babe, you know, get some rest. I, I'll I'll play with him. Hmm. Two hours, man, I had him because he's walking now. He's right. done with the couple of steps. Right. He's walking. He he tries to find like the next thing. Like, all right, I can take 10 steps to that to that uh, refrigerator. He gets there. All right, I got it. All right, it's going to take 10 steps for me to get to my high chair. I can do this. And you can see it in his eyes. And then he sits there. I love this kid. You know why? He claps for himself. And that's probably just because he's nice. learning how to clap and he's loving how it sounds. But he'll stop and just 
saw clapping and I, he looks at like looks at me so I start clapping with him. He's like, all right, how long before I get to the the air purifier? That's like 13 steps. I could do this. <laughs> it's the that. cutest thing. It's the cutest thing, man. That's amazing. But I, I I tired him out for the two hours and he's just knocked out in my arms. I so does he up. sleep? Does he sleep through the night? No, no. He, he still he, gets up. He's up like every hour and a half, two hours. He's up. Oh, he, he is. Yeah, he's up, and he's okay. one. But the other three, bro, we don't remember them. We remember them sleeping for like you know those four or five hours. Yeah. By the time they were like nine months. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. He is up, awake. What are we doing? Where are we going? Oh <laughs> you know, he's re- he's ready to go to great adventure. You know, get us get on the road early. He's. <laughs> <laughs> so is he crying when he wakes up or is he just up? He's yelling. Yelling. He's not crying. He's not there's no tears. He he's is trying to get your attention. Well, he's you know what? He's talking. We okay. we see this yelling. He's talking. He's 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 learning his voice. And in the early mornings before the birds are up, he's going at it. Like, hey, I'm up. You want to wake up? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Um, yeah, Bella Bella slept around. The, I have to ask my wife, but I think around like nine months or so. Like she was sleeping like through the night. Yeah, like she, right. She was she was good money, and um, around a year or so, I don't remember her really getting up like that. You know, no. not crying a lot. She was pretty cool. This one's definitely feels feels like she's going to be more of a problem. She feels like she's going to be like. I'm just not going to let you have your way. You will not sleep. You know, you can't relax. And she seems a bit more forceful. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. More assertive. <laughs> Bella is not assertive. Our first one. Blink twice if you need help. <laughs> Blink four times. <laughs> it is a bit... Um, You've got more kids than I do. So you're more experienced this than I am. It, the, one of the most fascinating things so far is starting to see the differences between the kids. Mm-hmm. You know, when when the new one was born, I only saw similarities. She was actually born in the same hospital room. She was delivered in the same delivery room. Oh, wow. You know, five years apart. And I saw her and I was like, she looks just like her sister. This is crazy. There's like so many similarities and everything's similar. And then you bring her home. It's like, oh, <laughs> she's very different. <laughs> <laughs> she, <laughs> she's got uh this um this energy you know like i said this assertiveness that the other one doesn't have and i i man i'm glad we're recording this because i feel like i'm gonna play this back in 10 years and be like we were spot on mm-hmm. the first one is mad chill and then the second one is just like what's up <laughs> um, so how how did how did you deal with do are any of your kids like that where like one was super chill and the other one's like Tons of energy. Well, I guess we're talking about that yes. right now, actually. But so, the older ones, though. So the older ones, uh, our daughter is really chilled out. I mean, she has her own whatever. She's turning 16 soon. But other than that, she's pretty She's pretty calm. When she was a baby, though, she was all over the place. She was. Mm. Um, in, a, in a very good way, I mean, I mean that, though. She was very hyper. Mm-hmm. Um, but as she got old, it, it calmed down. And then our our first son, which is our second born, they're 19 months apart. Um, he was all over the place. So he was definitely more hyper than she was. He was the one that once he learned how to walk, he was running like two weeks later and he was running into walls. We had a we were in a two bedroom apartment at that point of our life. And um, the hallway, the way he was set up. You left the living room, you know, it wasn't a long hallway, but you went down the hallway and there was like a, the door was there, the front door. So you had to like caddy corner to get down the rest of the hallway to the two bedrooms. Okay. He, he was not Tokyo drifting. He, he, he was going straight into that wall. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he, people listening, he wasn't hurting himself. He was stopping himself with his hands, but he was going into that wall. He was trying, he learned how to Kids. turn later on, but he was the hyper one. He was definitely high, more hyper than uh, our daughter. Mm-hmm. The third one, who's now eight years old, he's absolutely 
has the most energy out of those three. Really? He has the most. So it's been progressing to each child has a lot more energy than the previous one. So let's see what number four <laughs> brings to the table. It just, so it's gotten progressively mm-hmm. more energetic. I don't want to say worse, more energetic. More energetic. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it sounds about right. I think my brothers, you know, we, I grew up with three brothers. First one, super chill. Just that guy is stoic. He's like a philosopher, He's like a Greek philosopher. He's just very calm. Doesn't speak a lot, not a lot of words. The second one also has this like quiet wisdom, you know, sage wisdom thing about him. A little more, you know, boisterous than the first one. A little more colorful. And then you get me, and I'm just <laughs> like, I mean, look at my face. You see the expressions on my face that I use and the way I talk with my hands. And then my little brother. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's, he was... <laughs> It was a madman growing up. It was a terror growing up, man. And we, I, rem- I remember said, him. I remember uh, him. Yeah. A lot of people remember him. He was a terror. Yeah, what's, a, what's his name again? Um, Skis. Yeah. Steve, S- right? Skis, man. Skis, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that dude. Skis, man, is a problem. Some he was always cool. He was always cool, though. He's always he smiling. Was. When I saw him, he was always smiling. He always has a smile on his face. Yeah. He does. He's not, he's not a... He's like... He's he's a cool he's a cool guy. He's, I'm telling you, he was a terror as a kid, man. He 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 did a lot of stuff, and for a long uh, people didn't think it was related. No, I didn't know that at first. Like, actually, that's, your, that's your brother, really? Oh, like two completely different people, you know? Because he's just he's just he's just out there, and you know, in the best way. You know what I'm saying? Like us. What's funny is that we we spent so much time together. You know, he was like my I was, that's my ace. You know what I'm saying? Like that's my. That's my guy. That's my heart. Mm. All right. Um, we grew up basically together. We're three years apart, but we always shared the same room as kids. And, you know, we we spent the most time together as brothers out of all the four of us. Mm-hmm. I didn't we didn't we didn't separate until until I was twenty one and he was eighteen. Whereas with my older brothers, like they moved out of the house and stuff like that. But that was my guy. But he was just a problem. My parents used to say, if y'all keep calling him, we used to call him a monster, I think, something like that. My parents were like, if y'all keep calling him a monster, he's going to grow up to be a monster. Because we used to tease him. Like, oh, this is a little monster. Ah, this is like when he was a baby. He was, he was like, ah. You know, the guy grew up to be a monster. You know? But the, in the best way possible. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm not criticizing him or downing him. He knows this. If he watches this and hears it, like, he knows how, how much I love him. And how highly I respect him. But to your point, from the first one to the last one, just the the difference in the energy was Mm -hmm. crazy. The dynamic, right? (laughs) And I'm I feel like I was I'm so happy with my first kid because she's so chill. She's like five now. She's just now starting to get a little, you know, she gets a little kindergarten sass or whatever. But generally speaking, she's like super chill. And I'm a little concerned because the next one's going to be like, you're not going to be that chill, huh? Mm-hmm. You know, and um, our first one, we could take to restaurants, fine dining, white tablecloths, no problem. She'll hang out, she's chill, you know, eat off the menu type of type of kid. Mm-hmm. I, feel like, I feel like this next one's going to be pulling on the tablecloth, <laughs> you know? I'm sorry, uh, you know, she's a little uh, hyper, you know. <laughs> Fork on the floor. <laughs> Butter yeah, over there. Stuff, the throwing, you know what I'm saying? Throwing stuff at the Mater D. The, the first one was not like that. So we, we'll see how it goes, but it's all a you'll blessing. It'll be fine. It'll be yeah. fine. It'll work out. How do you feel about your input, you know, to each kid and how, because you have kids that are older, and you're mm-hmm. like you've seen how you talk to your kids, what you pour into your kids, what you get out of that. You know the result of that. You know what has an impact and what doesn't. Things that you said to your kids when they were little, and it's like, well, I guess, I guess that didn't really do much. And then other things like, oh, they really were listening. Um, you know, for somebody like me, what what do you have to say? 
Look, um, allow your children to be themselves when they're home, which means, you know, just just let them be free to who to be who they are. Let let them have a voice. Mm. I'm not saying your kids should be talking back to you, but let your children, especially in this. Some people are gonna be watching and say, "Oh no, you can't do that. That's not well. These are not. This is not 1960. This is not 1970. That's why the, even our generation, I'm 1980s baby, but why we have so many problems because they didn't give us a voice. It's like you know, speak when you're spoken to, or you want something more to cry for, or you know, those are the things we grew up with. Sure we enough. do not beat. We do not beat our children. Right. We talk to our children. That whole." slave mentality of you know beat your child yeah. no so you don't have to talk to your child yeah um same, again same not everyone's going to agree with that that's so go raise your kids have fun doing that my kids are perfectly fine because when we hear about them outside of the home all we hear are praises of why your children are so polite oh they know how to say the time of day good morning good afternoon good evening mm -hmm. oh they know how to say thank you and you and bless you and you're welcome so we taught them the foundations of being a civil human being at home. Yeah, they won't say thank you to each other all the time. They won't say you're welcome to each other all the time. And it'd be little scuffles here and there. But that's them just being them and they're able to be free at home. So what we've instilled in them and what we've taught them is amazing. And it shows and reflects when someone else tells us, you know, well, your child, when we met them, is so polite or has, you know, a great education or whatever, maybe because we do teach them at home after school as well, because not everything in school is all the facts. You know, sure. they just give you 10 percent of the facts and leave out all the other stuff that's, you know, America's history. They want to leave out. So it doesn't <laughs> look so right. dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, to, yeah, to answer your question, yeah, we let them be themselves at home because we know outside of the home they're representing the Skeen family very well. And when it comes to personalities, the older ones, I mean, th those are changing every six months right now. When you right. think you know who your child is, six months later, it's a, not a different personality, but they're evolving, they're growing up, right? Um, I do tell, I talk to my, my older two a little different than I talk to my eight-year-old um, just because of understanding. So I let my older two understand, listen, Mommy and I are watching you guys grow up, but you're ex you're watching us grow up also. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not reading. There's no, we didn't get a brochure with, with each of you when you were born. We didn't get a blueprint with each of you. We're doing this as we go. Right. So we're giving you leeway to make mistakes and learn from them. Give us leeway to make mistakes and learn yeah. from them. And they both understand it. And they, they definitely take it to heart when I talk to them that way of, all right, give me a break sometimes. I might have, maybe I said the wrong thing to you. Maybe, but tell me why you feel that way then. Wow. Is that so? Did I hurt you by saying that? Okay, well, that's how you know I was raised, and my parents did an amazing job. So, but like maybe they said something to me, so I'm going to tell you that because that's what I know. All right, that's the wrong. All right, so that's the wrong way nowadays. So help me, help me out. That's not always. There's certain things that I need it done this way, and that's it. Hmm. And period. I don't do it with an iron. I don't rule with an iron fist, though. Mm -hmm. Give me your opinion. Whether or not I, I'm going to take your opinion and run with it, that's two different things. <laughs> but yes, I want to. I definitely want to hear your voice. You know why? Also, I also have a daughter that's going to be 16 in a couple of weeks that I still have a relationship with. She yeah. still comes and talks to me in the awesome. mornings before school. We talk to each other. I you hear other parents that yo know, my my daughter or my son whatever did we I barely talk to them. They say hi and bye. No, we have open conversations with our kids so and it's and it's working. So, you know, previous generations of this is how it's supposed to be done. OK, but at one point there was no such thing as a cell phone. At one point, there was no such thing as a computer. There was the technology wasn't there. At one point, we all rode horses and horse buggies and then Ford decided to make a car. So stop. Things evolve. So the way we raise our children and the way we grow as parents should evolve as well. Why is it stagnant? It shouldn't be stagnant if everything else around us is evolving. Oh man, so much good stuff in there, bro. You really like that really blessed me, man, because um, you know, yesterday my daughter 
said to me, I said, I said to my, I asked my daughter to do something and she wasn't doing it. And the first time it was like, can you please do this? You know, baby, can you please do this? She didn't, she didn't even, she didn't even listen to me. She just ignored me. And then she finally is like actually talking to me. And I'm like, all right, but can you, can you do this please? Like do the thing. And she gets up and she goes into the kitchen and she doesn't come out. And I go in the kitchen and she's sitting on the floor with her, you know, hands on her, her knees, with her back, you know, to the entrance to the kitchen. And I could tell, you know, she's not happy. And so I say, I, I, I sit down next to her on the kitchen floor and I say, what's the matter, baby? And she says, I don't, actually, no, she didn't say anything at first. I said, when you're ready to talk, I'll be here to listen. And she immediately says, I don't like the way that you talk to me. I said, what don't you like about the way that I talk to you? She said, you talk to me hard. And I said, okay, what does talking to you softly sound like? And she says, she, she kind of, you know, says it in the way that I would say it. And she's like, can you please do this, baby? And I'm like, is that how you would like for me to ask you things? She's like, yeah, like that. I said, okay, I will try to do that. That's my end. And your end is you have to listen. Okay? She says, yes. So we get up, we go back into the living room. And I'm like, baby, can you please? Da, 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 da. And she's like, yes, daddy, I can do it. You know, and then um, maybe literally like half an hour later, um, I asked her to do something else. And I was like, baby, can you please? Da, 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 da. She says, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. You said <laughs> to ask you softly. And I'm asking you softly. And you're like, no. I said, what happened to our kumbaya moment that we had on the kitchen floor? <laughs> <laughs> that fires out. <laughs> it, was, it was it was good because it was what you said. It was like you know what? Let me listen to her, you know, and see how you're feeling. You can talk to me, and I'm I'm grateful. Man, I'm so happy that we're having this conversation. I don't want to cry because you've been through it a lot longer, and it's good to hear that some of the things that we're trying to do, you know, is like stuff that you found works because we feel the same way. It's like, you know, I certainly grew up in a, <laughs> the, the, tell me how you're feeling. <laughs> Get that Come on. nonsense out of here. Come that on. hippie talk. Come on. Hippie talk, man. Come on. There was none of that. There was, <laughs> I was talking to my wife about the, 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 anyway. There's a statute of limitations and all this stuff. Anyway, but um, no, nah, you didn't have that environment where you could just express yourself freely. I will say this. My parents were pretty cool with me in particular. Um, they told me all the time, you know, Fenton, you are, um, you should be an attorney. The way you like to argue, you know, they, they did allow me space to make my point. And they told me that is because they found that I was really articulate at a young age. They were like, you know, this guy really lays out his arguments really well. Like he's really thinking. He's not being emotional and just being like, no, that's not what I want to do. He's like, well, you know, here's the reason why mom and dad, I think that, 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 that you know, precedent says. And then when you look at my brother and his situation, uh, you know, like I was that kid. <laughs> You got spreadsheets. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, so they, they actually encouraged it, which is cool. Yeah, um, but is also, cool. you know, you might, you know, catch, you know, catch a, <laughs> I was say catch a hot one. You know, you catch a whooping too um, every other day. So anyway, I don't want to get lost in a word salad, but my point is that I'm really happy to know that, um, that that stuff works because we believe that that's the right way to do it is to let the kids speak. Let them be themselves. Home should be the sandbox. This is the testing ground, you know? Right. The, the fact that she didn't listen to me at home, it kind of, it's like it bothers me, but it bothers me less knowing that at school, she's respectful exactly. to the teacher and to the kids exactly. and she listens. Because we talk about it. It's like, yo, you're not listening when I ask you to clean this stuff up. Let me ask you a question. When you go to school and Miss So-and-so says to clean, like, do you do it? She's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you taught her. She comes home with, like, 
surprises. They call them like surprises. You get like a um, like a choice box or something. Yeah, my son has that box with the gifts or whatever. You know, you pick a prize, yeah. and it's like, well, why do you get the choice box? Oh, because I was listening. Because I sat down <laughs> quietly. I was a good listener. Oh, so the good kids get to choose from the prize box? Yeah. So you're good at school, and then you come here and 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 you know be running amok. It's like she gets to be herself. Basically. She gets to be herself. She That's her comfort zone. And you know what? She gets to be. Come on. I had to. Can I interject? I have to interject. Yes. And I'm going to thank your mother-in-law again because every time I interject, I'm going to thank her. So thank you, mom. So any parent that's saying, well, you know, is that that's that may not be right the way you're doing it. It's not right. They shouldn't be able to have a voice. Think about this for one second. When you were a child and your parent wasn't giving you that voice or giving you that leeway or giving you that, you know, here, here, take a little bit of rope and learn. Right. When you were that child and you kept saying, oh, I wish I wish when I have children, I'm not going to do it like this. I'm not going to do it this way. The way my parents did it, I'm going to change it up and you're not changing it up. Well, you need to revert back to when you were a child for a sec. Take some time when you were a child and say, remember, I remember when I said when I have children, I was I was going to let them or I would let them do this or and I'm not saying put your child in danger, but just remember that you were once a child and you also wanted a voice. Now, give your child that voice because you can change the way patterns are because we have this pattern. We as people, it's not we're talking as black men. So in our culture, you know, I'm from Central America. My family's from Central America. My wife's family's from the West Indies. Fenton has the same concept. He's, you know, has some West Indies in them and American. And our cultures tell us, well, if they don't listen, you beat them. If they don't listen, you yell at them. And they don't listen, you know, because you were a child and you said you wouldn't do that when you had children. So change up your patterns. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. But you have a bunch of people with books out there that don't have kids telling you how to raise your children. Right. All right. People with no kids. Well, I have a degree. Have a child. Have get a no child. sleep. Get, wake, get waking up every hour for a few years. Go, go. You're worried that your child's out there and, you know. Um, it's after school and they're, you know, whatever, have a child for a second and tell me how to raise my children. Oh yeah. I have four children now. Let's say the three that are older, not the newborn, not the one that's one years old. All right. Three different personalities. So how's your book helping me when I'm trying to learn on my own about my children? I'm not saying books don't help. I'm not saying that, yeah, no, but no, how can no, I, yeah. how can someone write a book about business, write a book about child, write a book about marriage, and you've never actually stepped into the pit or stepped into the arena, let's say, mm -hmm. and boxed. Mm -hmm. You never put the gloves on. You never been married. You never had kids. You never, you never put the gloves on and box. All right, so don't tell me how to do it then. You can suggest all day. But we as parents have to remember we were once children. Let me get back to my point. We have to remember we were once children and we said we wouldn't do this. We'll remember that. And remember that, you know, well, I was, I was, I, I, I grew up being hit. I grew up with, do you want something to cry for? I, I grew up with that. You want something to cry for? I remember when I stuck the key in the socket in Brooklyn because I wanted a key and my brother had a key and I wanted a key for the house. I took the key, I stuck it in the socket and took out the entire first floor of the <laughs> apartment building. I got beat. After my parents found out I was good, I got a little butt whoop. You didn't have to go to the And hospital? it is what it is. <laughs> no, luckily I didn't get uh, electrocuted. That didn't happen until I was like 18 in construction. That's a whole other story though. Wait, so is this, the sticking metal in the socket thing like a myth? Like, why didn't it's not that it's a myth? I didn't get electrocuted because the circuit breaker grounded. did its job. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so, you know, technology, the way things work, it did its job and I didn't get electrocuted. Thankfully, right. I let go of that key just in time. I don't know. It looked like it was like, I remember it was like a little mailbox key and it had like this. I can't remember. I could have sworn it was either purple or blue or something like that. With those slinky wristband, whatever things, and he had a key attached to it. I remember that's what it was. And my dad was like, Here's your key. Like, so proud. Like, look, you wanted a key. Here it is. Meanwhile, the next day, I'm sticking that thing in a socket. So bad. Listen, your kids wow. are going to make mistakes. Your kids are going to, you see it as talking back. They're testing their waters the same way you did when you were growing up. They're just testing their waters. You have a kid that's making a mess in your house and you don't want to mess, but don't have children then. 
Mm. Kids are going to make a mess because they're experimenting. Mm -hmm. They want to know if they broke the glass or the mug by mistake, it spilled milk. It's a mug. Mm -hmm. They learned that if you drop that mug on the floor, it's going to break. But you got to let your kids experiment. You got to let your kids evolve and, and learn because beating and yelling at them is not going to let them learn. All that it's going to do is make them scared to do something again, which when they get, become adults, they're scared to move and move forward with their thought processes and do something. Yeah, the way that stuff manifests when you're an adult is crazy. You know, it's like you end up having to unlearn everything that you were taught as a kid. And that's if you even figure out that you were taught things as a kid and programmed, you know, as a certain way as a kid and realize, huh, this programming is, a, and by the way, the language of music, this is straight out of uh, a book. It's the four agreements, the book, the four agreements is a phenomenal book. I usually keep it right by my desk, but I don't know where it is. Um, you know, we're, we, we've we talked about this on the show before. Like, we're computers. And we've been programmed. And some of that programming is trash. But we're running on that old software. We need new programming. And, you know, you said you're growing as your kids are growing. You're learning as they're learning. You're learning how to parent as they're learning how to be raised. And it's it's software. And we have to keep on upgrading that software and learning new things. And so, you know, the hardest part is to like realize that you're no longer running the latest, greatest software. That's hard for people. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. Nothing's broken. Nothing's, nothing's wrong. It's fine. No, it's not. But somebody has to tell you that. And if they tell you, like you may not listen. You know what I'm saying? Like it may take something pretty heavy in your life you know, a relationship that gets like really fractured or, you know, something like that for you to realize like, hey, I need to make some changes. And then you have to go get the right information. Right. You might go get information, but get it from the wrong place. People do that all the time. Some people, people I do think, as, especially as, you know, as parents and as we get older and you're juggling work and, and life and marriage and whatever, you're like, this is a lot. Something's wrong. Things don't go the way that I want them to go. I need to figure out, you know, some framework to get back on track, make things better. I think some people, they go looking in the wrong places and they waste a lot of time um, implementing bad info, bad software. And um, that's when it comes down to who you're listening to, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's why you're doing, you know, the coaching thing, right? Like kinetic shift with the coaching. It's like to give people like quality information, you know, that they can, you know, upgrade their software with and, you know, and be, be running in a more optimal way. We have to, we have to first come to that place. It's like something's wrong. I, I've been doing that probably since I was in my 20s. Okay. Because, because things were so screwed up. That's what it did for me. I had a lot of red flags, you know, it was like mm. relationships suck. Like this is not the way that I thought a relationship should be not a romantic mm -hmm. relationship, not a relationship with my family, my relationship with my work, you know, my relationship with myself. Just a lot of my relationships were just like really trash. And I was like, something needs to change. And I had good people around me. I had quality people around me that had done work on themselves. And I don't, that's, you know, I attribute that to God, just putting the right people in my life. I don't, I can't tell you how to go find the right people, you know? And I don't know, maybe that's something that, I mean, I guess we could, like if we broke it down, you and I, and started to think like, what are the characteristics of, you know, quality individuals that you'd want to have in your life? You know, right. they, they, they should exhibit certain characteristics. And I don't think we have the time to, you know, go through that whole kind of thing, but, um, you know, make sure that you surround yourself with people who are where you want to be. Let's start with that. Yeah. You know, I like to talk to, married men you know with children who are older than i am have kids who are older than i am maybe they've made mistakes you know but they're able to get through you know talk to me dude you know what i'm saying like tell me you know i could talk to you about like yo you got kids as older than me it's a great person in my life to talk to you've been there right and you and you're, uh, you're doing good 
great. Talk to Ken. <laughs> Don't talk to the guy who's, you know what I'm saying, divorced, you know, and, you know, his kids don't talk to him. You know, you, I don't think you want to go air your grievances with that guy. Hey, man, you know, things are really rough, you know, like, why don't you tell me, you know, how's you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Which is not to say that, you know, people who haven't had things go, you know, the right way, whatever, you know, can't impart wisdom to you. You know, sometimes somebody can tell you, hey, don't do this because I screwed it up. You know, right. but I'm rambling. It's all good. Oh my it's it's it was a perfect wrap up. It's a perfect wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I didn't um, I didn't do it like an intro. You know, it's all right, and I think that's it's totally right. cool. Um, this is you know clearly for people who are parenting, uh, gonna be parents, um, have been parented, and maybe you know didn't understand why their parents did certain things. Um, you know, maybe you can go back and have a conversation. And if you can't, maybe you can forgive, um, you know, because we we really are in a sandbox. We're in a, you know, we're testing a lot of things out as we go along the way. And we're not always going to get it right, you know, but I think as long as your heart's in the right place and you're, you're leading with love, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Yeah, man. Love it. What's on the teleprompter? I love you more. Um, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share with somebody on their personal development journey. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>